Konnichiwa. Welcome to today's video, folks. I hope you're all looking after yourself, keeping really, really well, and having a fantastic day. Um, so today we're just going to be looking at a, a centrifugal clutch for the Honda GX160-200 engines. Um, it's quite a simple little technical video, hopefully. Um, something that probably aimed more towards new guys in karting with kart engines because it's something that you see come up quite regular and until you know it, you don't know it. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to run through quickly the importance of them, what they are and how we fit them correctly. So without further ado, let's go. So let's start off by looking at the tools for the job. First of all, most importantly, a nice warm cup of tea. Get one of those ready. You're going to need a centrifugal clutch itself. And then the best tools are a flat headed screwdriver, a pair of circuit pliers and a small pick. If you look at the end of that pick, it's quite a small one there and very fine circuit pliers and a flat head screwdriver. So this is the centrifugal clutch. And what we have here is the outer drum with the tooth wheel, which is connected via a chain to the rear axle. If we turn it over. We have the inner hub here, which has got a keyway, and is this turns with the crankshaft of the engine, and then we have clutch shoes and springs there and there. So the idea is that below a certain RPM, this centre hub spins round with the engine. Once it reaches a certain RPM, depending on what weight springs we've got in, the centrifugal force will overcome the force of the springs and throw these shoes out to grip the basket or the drum, and then the drum and the hub will all spin together at the same speed, therefore transferring the drive via this sprocket and a chain to the rear axle and drive the rear wheels. That's how they work in principle. Now, when you're running cadet engines, not so much of a problem because you've only got the one engine. Once you get up to junior and senior pro carts and you've got this twin engine set up here like this, we need to actually change the position of the clutch shoes within the basket. So on this side we can see it's not too much of a problem. This is what's known as the outboard clutch because we've got lots of space this side of it. If we move over to the inboard side, you can see you're very, very close to the seat with that clutch. We actually have to turn that drum round. If it was the other way, it would be rubbing on the seat. You wouldn't be able to get the engine far back enough and if you had it too far over, this way on the rear axle, this part of the car bolts would be rubbing on the inside of the tyre to run the sort of rear width that you want to run. So we need to turn this clutch round. The problem with turning this clutch round is we need to also make sure we turn the shoes round within the basket. So if you see here, this is the small section here of the clutch shoe and we need that to be the leading edge. So this one is set up to rotate. This one is set up for the outboard clutch here, the same as the one that's on the car engine at the minute. So these engines, when viewed from the clutch side, rotate anti-clockwise. So if I just pull the pull start, you can see they rotate anti-clockwise, not bolted down at the minute. There we go, so you see the hub bit in the middle, central bit is rotating anti-clockwise, which means that this shoe needs to have the small part as the leading edge. If you have the larger part, what you'll end up doing is the clutch shoe will chatter like that rather than just engaging fully and it'll end up cracking it through the clutch shoe and end up blowing up basically. So if we go over to the inboard side, now you can see if we pull this engine over, Remember, it rotates anti-clockwise. So you can see the hub's turning that way. If we look at this here, in the same orientation, remember this is a clutch that's set up for the outboard. So then it is rotating that way now, as the engine's running, like that you can see that you're going to have this large part of the shoe as the leading edge which is what's going to cause that shoe fracture so they do show you they do give you instructions within the boxes for these but we're just going to run through quickly using these tools how we change that over 
So guys, hopefully you can see this okay. Uh, what we need to do first of all is remove this circlip on the top of the clutch. So you can actually do this just with a flat headed screwdriver if you don't have circlip pliers by wedging it in there and just popping the circlip over, but it's much, much easier if you've got some nice fine circlip pliers. You can even use the circlip pliers and the screwdriver just to release that circlip. Word of advice, don't do this on a day when you're stressed or you're running out of time because you'll end up losing this and the clutch shoes, springs, all over the workshop and you'll be getting very, very stressed out with it. Also try and do this before you get to the track as a vice is quite necessary to make this a lot easier as a job. So now we're taking the circlip off, we can remove the outer drum. There is a small spacing washer. And now we can see you've got the drum with the needle rollers in there. The hub assembly in the middle, which is keyed to the crankshaft and then the shoes themselves and the clutch springs. Now we can change the RPM, the clutch engages by changing the weight of these springs. And these are actually identical side to side. So what we're going to do is remove the springs, take the shoes off and show you how we can change the position of them in relation to the hub. Um, also, it's quite important with this clutch maintenance wise to clean out your grooves here on the clutch shoes, rub them back up with some memory cloth. Same with the inside of the drum. You can score that up and just get make sure the, uh, the surface has got a nice good frictional surface and a little bit of grease on the needle rollers. You don't want to go too far because you put too much grease on there, it's going to fly out and contaminate all your shoes. So here we are, the clutch hub and the clutch shoes are bolted into the vise. Important when you bolt in the vise not to actually bolt the hub itself and just bolt the shoes on there. Now we need to remove one of these springs. So the easiest thing is one of these rounded picks like we've said before. Pop it in under there and just give it a tug backwards and the spring will pop out like that. So now we can take it back out of the vise back to the workbench. So here we are at the vise now. Uh, we've got the top spring removed there. Now we can actually release the shoes and you can see the components. You've got the hub, the springs, the shoes and the basket all separately. This is the point where you'd be changing your springs if you want to change your springs. You need to turn these, they're hooked. They are hooked underneath the little, um, I don't know if you can see it there. The little roll pin goes through there. They're just hooked underneath that. So you kind of need to twist them off to get them off once you've got the first one undone with the little hook, like so. And then we can change that clutch spring. They do also snap on the ends of these, so always inspect them and make sure they're still in good working order. So these shoes, like I say, they're actually identical shoes. If we take them off the other one of there. You can see, if we lay them on top of each other, they are identical, identical clutch shoes. So what you've got to remember is they can go like that, or like this, or like that, or like that. So what we want to be doing is setting the shortest, this part, the shortest leading edge for the orientation of the clutch, whether it's an inboard or outboard clutch. Okay guys, so hopefully now you can see with the hub out, and these shoes arranged as so. This would be an outboard clutch in this orientation as it would be spinning that way, anti-clockwise. And this is the small part of the clutch shoe as the leading edge. If we wanted it to turn around the other way, so let's now imagine this is an inboard clutch spinning this way. This is the large part of the shoe which is incorrect, we need the small bit. What we can do is take the shoes off and we just play around with it until you find the right orientation. Now obviously that's not correct because you can see the, the large gap at the top and the bottom is incorrect. So we move it around, you can see that's not correct either way because it's 
the larger and the smaller side there. So we need to play around with it until we get it in the right orientation like this. There now we can see. So this edge here now is the short leading edge. This edge up here is the short leading edge. So as it spins clockwise as viewed from this end, remember this is bolted on to the inboard side like that. So it's going to spin that way. You can now see that the short part of the clutch shoe is the leading edge. So that's how you swap them over from inboard to outboard clutches. Very, very important to do this. Uh, like I say, a good job to try and do it at home or somewhere with a bench and a vice before you get to the track as it can be tricky. And you can take the opportunity to service your clutch, clean it up, clean up the drum and experiment with slightly different weight springs for different tracks and different track conditions. So there we have it guys, nice little short technical video for you guys. Um, just something I thought I'd throw together whilst I was up here in the workshop doing it, as it's, uh, it's something that people don't realise when they first get into pro karting. Uh, I'm not going to bore you with how it goes back together, it's just a reversal of removal, but hopefully that has helped somebody out there to understand what's going on. Sorry if it was a bit complicated and blabbering on, it didn't make much sense, but once you've done it once or twice, you'll fully understand what's going on. So yeah, hopefully it's helped somebody. Thanks for tuning in. Look after yourselves. We'll see you soon, hopefully. Ta-ta.